Thurston is on KGO and it's uh, <laughs> <wee! laughs> it's talking about when men in heterosexual in, uh, in heterosexual relationships ask a woman how many people have you slept with there was a young woman who was dating this gentleman who over time became increasingly curious about how many people she was intimate with how many people she slept with <clears throat> and <laughs> I'm driving up the grade <laughs> so <laughs> he hit the roller coaster and so the uh, woman already knows that she's terrible at lying and decides to answer honestly and he became upset because of the truth of her sexual history why she her the answer was generally because she wasn't more virginesque wasn't more innocent why is it and pat thurston is talking about everything why why do men want to know this question and you know you don't want to know the answer and women don't really want to tell the answer for that double standard and that fear of judgment and that expectation why do men want more virgin-esque and innocent women when well they're talking about it right now about <clears throat> proclivities and knowing themselves as well as having experiences and and the fumbling and bumbling as well as just you know getting to know how to do things and pat thurston is saying well you want us to lie and the other women on, on there are talking about strategies about how how to answer that question what is the right answer and they're like please men call in call in men please call in and tell us what the right answer is and i'm thinking okay well you know the greater portion of kgo listeners are a bit older than me <clears throat> they're older generations but there are some millennials that do listen but you know millennials are kind of more not more i'm not gonna say more the millennials I've been exposed to have been a tad more, a bit more open-minded. So you have those more radical ones, you know, politically correct and okay about sexuality, more open about, you know, like sex ed and all the good stuff. And then you also have those older gentlemen who have lived their life. They've had that judgment in the past when they're dating, such as the window of this time that this young lady broke up with this guy for his question and him expecting her to be virgin-esque. Now, when this question is posed, men, what kind of answer do you want? Due to the audience being older and having lived their life, they're probably going to say, I would want the truth. I would want to hear exactly the truth because I would want to know. I would want my partner to be honest and disclose truthful information to me. And they might acknowledge that, yes, when in my younger years I expected, you know, innocence from a partner or I'd be intimidated that she had more partners and I wouldn't be up to par or, you know, these are all assumptions, but I have an inquisitive mind and I'm constantly asking questions and also interacting with multiple generations so I am gonna go out on a limb and say my assumptions might be close to reasonable I'm not saying what I say goes but <clears throat> what I'm frustrated with is the way Pat Thurston is presenting it is not talking about the sexism is not talking about the ingrained religion and conditioning about the patriarchy about about misogyny, about sexism, about the denouncing women's experiences, the double standard that we are raised with when it comes to, oh, if you have a child, if you have a young male, and he's growing up and he's coming to sexual maturity, the father's going to give him a condom and be like, be safe, go have fun. And when he has a daughter the same age, that he's going to be like, no, no boys over, no overnights, none of this, none of this, door open, all of these standards when they're growing up, when it comes to that type of information, when it comes to sexual health, when it comes to all of these criteria and interactions upon the upbringing of this youth, there are differences between the sexes. And then when it comes to the portrayal of how people are, men, they're the man, they're the guy, they're the ultimate guy because his sexual conquest. Woman, she has multiple partners, she's a slut. If she has a small amount, she's she's prudish and innocent. And then if she has too many, she's sluttish and, and she's bragging about her sexual proclivity. Now, I have no problem with people's sexual histories. I have no problem with how people judge or validate what they do in their life. 
when they project onto other people, though, when they deem or claim that someone is less than, I have a problem. I have a problem with people who just can't accept people for who they are. I respect all kinds of people, even those who have 100% opposing views of mine. I may be frustrated in areas that we can't come to a reasonable, you know, a neutral playing field, but I still respect them because they have the right to their own opinion, they have the right to their own perspectives, but if I give them the time to listen to, if I give them the time and I will listen to them, I would hope they would give me that same respect. That being said, why aren't these things being talked about? Why isn't sexual health, spiritual health, mental wellness, evaluation of the sexism in how the past has brought up the youth, how religion and patriarchy has infiltrated the methods and the way society has shaped and shifted, <clears throat> shape and shift the way we portray the sexes and variations of, because right now we're very stuck in the binary, and that's a headache of its own. And we're just like, what do you mean the binary? Male and female only. There's no accepting of that gray area, alternative, different, other. Can we just can we just say that there are multiple and it's not just a spectrum? There is a total variation, a total acknowledgement, a total balance of all these. We can be on far end with one aspect, far end of the other, but it, it's not just two. Can we please accept that much? And the whole bathroom issue, just fucking, excuse me, um, having gender neutral bathrooms. Gee, your house is an intersex bathroom. Your dad, your mom use the same bathroom. What a concept. Calm down. Okay. That, I, that's a whole other topic. Don't need to go there. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say is, can we start talking about freaking, oh dear. No! It's Miss Being Hit. Oh my gosh. Can we start talking about, yeah, I unbuckled because I'm on the back roads. Oh shit. Not on the back roads. I'm on Indian country. <laughs> not regulated um so when it comes to questioning these things can we please question why there's an expectation to meet the criteria of a partner of asking the question of how many partners we've had you want your partner to be honest open and willing to interact with you with that being said you need to communicate with your partner before you ambush them in that question. If you believe you may have a problem with witnessing your partner saying that they have been with more partners than you assumed, let's, let's, let's say I was a sensitive person. I start dating this other person and my idea of them is pure and innocent. Maybe they've had like two or three partners and I, I, I like that idea because I don't want to, to know that they're crazy and wild. I am taking a lot of responsibility here because I was going to put myself in the other person's shoes. Shit. And, and I would say, I'd like to know how many partners you've had. I'd love to know about your sexual history. I do have a very short history of partners. And I've always thought of you as being someone who's reserved or conservative about your sexual past. So I am nervous about asking this question and I understand that I don't know what the answer is. I'm not going to try and judge you. I'm not going to try and react harshly if I witness a number that's beyond my acknowledgement. And respectful balance. I don't know. See, that's the problem. Like, people do not know how to take accountability that way. Like, if that question was asked to me, <laughs> one, <laughs> one, um, 
there are pieces of my past that have been grayed out. But there's there has been emotional occurrences in my life where I don't remember. It's a protective mechanism. It's like the self-preservation. It just said, you know what, this window of your life was not all that pleasurable, so this part of your history is going to be grayed out. Now, I could venture to say if I think back and I do a tally mark, that number might intimidate a lot of people, men, women alike, and other people, beings. That number might intimidate beings who have this preconceived notion that I should or shouldn't have a unique experience as a human being and the way I've chosen to live it and experience my life and express it and experience and experiment with various other beings in a sexual nature. So what I'm saying is we need to communicate more. We need to ask ourselves how can we be a better partner? How can we communicate with our partners our insecurities and also our judgments? There are things that I might judge or have an opinion of when someone says, hey, by the way, I'm really into XYZ. Whoa, I've never even heard of XYZ. What's that? Or whoa, XYZ, I've heard some crazy things about it. Or whoa, XYZ, that's beyond my limits. Most of the time in my life, because I'm an edge pusher and I'm a curious being, I tend to say to each their own. I say try anything once, twice, or three times to say it's really something that is or isn't for you. Of course, we can have traumatic occurrences around certain topics and experiences, so therefore it's going to be one. And there's sometimes where, you know, you can go to a sushi place and that chef or whoever was preparing or the waitress was not all that great, so therefore you had a bad experience, but it wasn't exactly due to it's your first time having sushi. It was the, the, everything around it. So that's why it deserves a second chance or third. <laughs> and so that's the reason why I say these things is give them a chance. People, experiences, stuff like that. Now, when it comes to other people living their life, when it comes to other occurrences where we have a preconceived notion of what that person is, like we idolize them or we think they're so amazing and we, we don't want to hear that they're into something, they're into XYZ, or we don't want to hear that they don't like XYZ. Or we, we, we don't want to know that they they have had huh, X, X, X number of partners. We would just like them to have X number of partners. You know, single digit, double, triple, you know. <laughs> Why does that affect us? Is it fear of our own health? Okay. Sexual history, sexual health, very valid. Um, is it your own ownership of your own feelings? I feel like they're going to judge me because they're more experienced than me. Or, oh gosh, I'm more experienced than them. They're totally innocent. I need to get away from them. The opposite end of the spectrum. Because this whole idea of purity, this whole idea that religion and society and morality and all of these preconceived notions of, what? Conditioning. All of this conditioning around how we must be and act. What is appropriate, what's not. I just, it, it just triggered me that when I witnessed what she was talking about, everything Pat Thurston said, it just irked me. She's like, you don't want to hear, men, you don't want us to tell the truth. Men, you don't want to know the real number. Women don't want to tell the real number because that's the exact problem. A lot of men have this judgment of purity and we don't meet that criteria. And so like, what kind of, what kind of information do you want to, um, they were even denouncing it themselves. They were saying the same things, that they would come to a conclusion about a woman being very promiscuous, as if it's a negative thing, or come to a conclusion that she's unclean or sluttish or open or she doesn't have her guard up. Like, we're doing that to ourselves. We're, we're judging other women for their experiences. What about sex workers? They're providing a service and they're being respectful and they're meeting the same criteria as a doctor as a lawyer, as a being providing interactive services for time. Our time is worth something. <laughs> when I say R and I associated it with the sex worker and previous, I'm no, no. <laughs> but I have nothing against it. I have good friends that are in that. 
and I have other friends who have willingly paid services. And it's the same thing. You pay, you could pay $20 an hour to a lawyer. You could pay $5,000 for a lawyer. You're going to get what you're going to get. The same thing from a pharmaceutical rep to a drug hustle on the street with marijuana. Gee, there's a big old fight around cannabis being legalized. So that drug hustler on the street <laughs> providing marijuana is well, doing the same thing as that pharmaceutical, as that doctor recommendation uh, service that we get in the downtown regions of the areas where it's allowed. So what I'm saying in all of this is why don't we question? Why don't we interact on a level that is a little more focused on our interpersonal relationships, on our self evaluation, our validation of acknowledging what our truths are, where our limits are, and what our interactions are. I'm just saying I was slightly triggered by Pat Thurston's commentary and I decided to make a video. And I ramble a lot, but it made the drive through Indian country up to the mountains worthwhile. So yeah, let's see how this goes.